Welcome to Creating and Binding Data Sources, Part 2. In this video, we will be binding a link data source to a grid control that was created from a TM1 view which we published in Enterprise Services. We will use link data sources to provide the data management layer between our web service and the controls they are bound to. We left off in part one connecting our drop-downs to the published TM1 subsets and now we are ready to bind the grid to the published view. So from our prototype we created a temporary grid that we could bind statically to show how it would look. Let's remove this now and create the real grid using a more powerful grid view control. So we go to our toolbox and we select grid view and then drag it to the form and we're going to bind this to the DS planning data source that we created earlier. Let's give this control a name so we find the ID in the properties window and then we set it to planning view. Now in the next video we're going to come back and we're going to create our own columns so that we can apply formatting but for now we're going to leave these at automatically generated. Next we need a button somewhere on the form to refresh the data after the user selects the entries from the drop-down. So let's add a column in this layout table to the right of the drop-downs and then let's set it wide enough to hold the button control. Okay, so back into the toolbox, we're going to get a button control which is at the top and we're going to drag it into the bottom row, last column of the layout. In the properties window, we're going to change the text to refresh and then let's again scroll to the bottom and we're going to locate the ID and we'll change this to BTN refresh. Alright, so now the user will come into the form, they will select the entries from the drop-downs and then hit the refresh button which will populate the grid. And that seems pretty good. So from the previous video we have already added the link data source for the view so we're going to start off by double clicking on it which will generate the selecting event, event for us. Now since the grid is being driven from the selections of the drop-down, we need to first get the values of what was selected from each of them. So we're going to define a string called version and then we're going to set that equal to our drop-down which was DDL version and then get the text value for that. Okay, and now we'll create a business unit, so a biz unit, and we'll set that equal to DDL business unit dot text. And then finally, let's create the last one, which will be uh, year, and we'll set that equal to DDL year, and then get the text value of that one. Okay, so now we've got all of the drop-down values and we're ready to query enterprise services for the monthly compensation planning. Now since the results are from a published view, enterprise services will return an object that we can put the results from the query into. This object will be called the name of the view followed by the word results at the end. So we're going to create an object and we'll call it es monthly compensation planning results and then we're going to put this into results and we'll set that equal to the web service call which will be WS dot monthly compensation planning okay now we need to specify the parameters for the view and what we will get is that we have to fill in for each dimension a value so we have the version 
and then we put in the business unit and then follow by year. Now for the remaining dimensions we can leave them blank and this will tell Enterprise Services that we need to use the defaults from how the view was originally set up. So all we need to do here is just specify blank values. Okay and then finally we need to get the error information so that would be out ERR and now we've got the method call that will bring the results in and then also give us an error status information. Now from this point you can use whatever methods you want to load the grid control. You could iterate through the results object and get all the data out by name and put it into the individual controls or you could write a link query which is what we're going to be doing in this demo. Now before we start, let's make sure that we've received a success from our method call. So we're going to check that by if err.success and then we'll create a code block here and if that is true it will go ahead and run this section. Now we have one other special case that we need to handle and that is what we need to do if a user selects some items from a drop-down which do not have any rows or data back from that. Essentially what will happen is uh, we will get no rows back but we will get a row set from Enterprise Services. So we're going to put in an if results dot row set dot rows equals null and so this will be true and what we need to do basically is tell the selecting event that we do not want to go ahead and do any binding. So we can do this by using e.cancel and we'll set that equal to true. Now let's put in our else and we will put an open and close block here as well. Okay so we're ready to put in the query and let's go ahead and type var and then give it the name to store the results and we'll call this query and that equals open paren from row in results dot row set dot rows which will iterate through all the rows in the row set and then we will select new followed by open brace and then close brace and then close the parentheses which will get all the rows into a new structure and then we want to convert this to a list so we will type dot to list and now we have a query which will put all of the rows into a list variable so now at this point we're ready to specify what we want the query to hold which is essentially the columns of the grid. So let's insert a line and we'll type in employee which will be the first column and set that equal to row dot employee and now we can choose from the items within the employee object that we want to show up in the column we've got name, we've got ID, and any other attributes which have been specified in the published view. We're going to use name in this case, but we might also want to return a column for ID if we were planning on using that value to drive some other controls. But for now, since it's just a table we're going to show, let's just go ahead and leave um, just the name column in for now. For the next column we want SEP for September and we're going to set that to row.sep and now here we want to get the value so we use dot value on this object and then we're going to format this as a currency string so we're going to type in dot to string and then we type in quotes we're going to do capital C and this will convert it to a currency Now we've got this so we can repeat this for the remaining months so we're going to copy this one and we're going to paste it 11 more times.
All right, so now we're ready to update the column names, uh, which will be from September through August in our case. And we'll just change each one of these. until we get all the way down to August. All right. Now let's go ahead and do the same for the data values coming from the row object and we'll change all of these to the corresponding months. And it would be nice to have a macro that would do this for us, but Okay, so we'll change them all the way until we get to August. And all right, now our query is all set up. So we have one more step that we need, and that is to set the event results. So that would be e dot result, and that is equal to the query that we just received. Now each time we need to get the data from this grid, we will pull the values from the drop down and then generate this query. So to kick off the query, we need to put in some code on our button and so that we can return to the design page. Let's double click on the button and this will create the click event for us. Now in here we're going to perform the bind which will execute the selecting event we just created. So we just type in planning view dot data bind. Okay, we are ready to preview our form, so we can compile it and run it. And then when it finishes, we will get our web page, so we can select from our drop-downs, change them here, and then hit refresh. And there's the data from TM1 into a grid view. This concludes Creating and Binding Data Sources Part 2. In the next video, we will create bound columns to our grid. We'll apply final formatting and then clean up the web page to make it ready for use.